Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Howdy, all y'all. This is Red O'Laughlin. We're on Talking Heads today on the USA Global TV and Radio Network. We're also on E360 TV, Zizzle, Amazon Fire, Roku, and of course YouTube. And we've added a new option on the YouTube, and that's for podcasts, audio only. So uh, please join us with whatever option that you want on that one. We've been talking the last several weeks about how can I get a book written? And let me go ahead and get my slides loaded up here real quickly. Okay, there we go. And as far as a disclaimer, I'm a researcher. I've never been involved in the pharmaceutical industry or the medical industry. I fell in love with the chemistry. Second part of hang on. I fell in love with chemistry as a sophomore in high school. And I got a degree in it, got an invitation to Vietnam, never got a chance to practice it until a few years ago. And I came back now and I basically, I, I look at what's going on in the human body at the cellular level, chemically speaking. I look for a cause and effect relationship. Treat a cause, fix a problem. Treat symptoms and you'll always be treating symptoms. But the problem with treating symptoms is the cause is still there and it can get worse and you never know about it. And as always, this presentation is for awareness and education. So I wrote a book, uh, I think last year, and the essential new author's guide. And you know, my short definition of this one is how to write and publish a book for free. Free is the operative word. There is absolutely nothing other than your time that you need to spend a nickel on to write a book and actually get it published. And everything that people pay money for, you can do for free. And now, does that fit every single genre, every single aspect of writing? No. But it does fit a lot of nonfiction, how-to kinds of things. So if you're into the how-to world, well, you're, you're probably in an option that you can, I can get this thing done, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, maybe no more. But anyway, we'll, we'll look about that. Let me get this thing here. Okay. So the first thing I usually tell people is, who are you writing the book to? Who is your audience? How are you going to reach them? If I'm just writing a book, let's say that I'm a speaker and I need a book to establish my credibility that I can sell at the back of the room or I can use as giveaways or whatever I want to do with that. I need a purpose from a book. Do I want to make a profit on this thing? Well, this is a very few authors sell more than 100 books. So if you can whatever your budget is and you can sell a hundred books, great. And you have a little bit of profit, but that's not everything that's out there. If I write a memoir, it may be for my family, maybe for my great grandkids that I'll never meet. Uh, it may just be to help people. Uh, but a lot of times you get introduced as a speaker, having written a book that adds to your credibility, especially if that book is in the same topic that you're speaking about. So, Keep your mind, keep your audience in mind when you're writing. Now, AI can help you a lot. Now, let's say that I want to write for baby boomers. I can go get a half a dozen pictures off of AI of baby boomers. I can get them off of a number of different places. And I can put them around my computer so that as I'm looking, okay, there's my audience. I can see the people I'm writing to. And that makes it a little bit easier sometimes to do your writing when you can see your audience. That's one that I would recommend to somebody. So who is your audience? How can I get in touch with them? That's a big 
how question. OK, what do I need to research? Well, if I it depends on what my book is, a lot of these kind of books that I help people get written and get published are self-help, they're memoirs. I've done a few novels, uh, cookbooks, uh, children's books, a number of uh, religious, uh, a lot of reflection kinds of things. There's a word for it. I can't think of the name right this second, but it identifies that genre of a book. But when you look at categories and keywords, those are the things that are going to be super critical when you start selling your book, marketing your book. You can have the category, same one as Oprah Winfrey, and she puts a book out same day as yours. She, well, I'm sorry, that just coincidentally happened. She's going to sell a million books. You may sell a dozen, but you can change the category and be in a different category, still a legal category, but you can be in a different category than Oprah if you look at what's out there and how you want to structure your book, because you generally have about three options on categories and they're your choices. Uh, again, keywords. If I said the title of my book is my life, well, what is that? But if I said in the keywords, in my subtitle, uh, the life and times of Red Laughlin from Vietnam through Bosnia. Okay, well, that gives you a little niche of where I'm going. So sometimes a title, you can't copyright a title. So you find a title you like, steal it. It doesn't matter. They can't do anything about it. But the titles are important. But the subtitles are the where you typically catch the keywords. So somebody's typing up on a Google search and they're looking for something and maybe two or three of your keywords are in that search, that may actually help somebody find you because your keywords are germane to your book. Uh, you walk into a bookstore and no particular interest in a specific kind of book, you're just kind of wandering around. If you capture somebody with the cover of your book and it's appealing, they'll probably go over and look at it for more than two or three or four seconds. Otherwise, they're just walking on by and they, they saw something. And we've talked about this before. If you can get them to pick up the book and look over in the back cover and, and read through that and get into the table of contents and actually go, they'll more than likely walk away with that book in their hands. But one of the things that we didn't talk about, I believe last week, you know, I had uh, a video, two nine minute videos on how do I do a competitor analysis? Who's my competition? What books do they write? How big are they? What are they pricing? Are they available in audio? Lots and lots and lots of things are free, super easy to do. Spend a little bit of time. You can go there and find more information than you would ever want to see. But if you want to have a competitive cover, go see what the successful authors are doing. And the competitor analysis, again, last week's uh, show had a video that we talked about exactly how you did that. Okay. A budget is very important, as with anything. But if I'm writing a book, I don't necessarily have to spend any money, but depending on what I'm writing, if I'm writing a novel, if I'm writing a romance, I'm writing a sci-fi, I may need to have not only just regular editing for spelling and grammar and diction, but I may also need a developmental editor, somebody that can keep my plot going, generate interest from the end of this chapter to the next one, the places that I have, the all the people that are in there. How am I introducing these characters? That's where that developmental editor helps. And when you hire one, they're expensive and it takes a long time. Not as expensive as a ghostwriter, but again, another expense in there. Uh, but for editing, for most people, just do the spell checker on Microsoft Word. Google has a very good one. I find that they both work well. One will catch other stuff, other things that the first one doesn't. I find particularly pleasing, the readback function on Microsoft Word. Look, look up there, boom, click it, and I can see the yellow block go on every word as I'm hearing it. I'm seeing it as it's being read, and I'm hearing it as it's read back to me. And I find that to be a very easy, oh, that didn't sound right. And you can stop it, fix it, and go back and listen to it again. Grammarly is another good free source of being able to do your grammar checker, spell checker, and things. AI, it can do a decent job, but you have to know the prompt to ask. You just can't say, edit chapter one. If, let's say, chapter one is seven pages, you're going to get back two paragraphs because what it's doing 
is summarizing everything. But if you say edit for grammar, edit for spelling, edit for diction, edit for, or say, let's proofread for eighth grade level, you're going to get a lot of options using AI, still your intellectual property. But the AI is helping you as a tool, like any tool. Spell checker is a tool. Proofing, AI does a pretty decent job at proofing. It can do a decent job at AI at editing, but you have to really, I have a prompt that's probably 15 or 20 words long that I use when I want AI to edit something because it's not just saying edit, it's a little bit more involved. So you can ask AI, what's a good prompt to have a book edited or article edited or whatever. Timing is critical when you're looking at your books. You're writing your book, you want it published for Christmas because you can get it out there and, and get sales. Well, publication date is very, very important. Do you need a pre-release? Do you need a pre-launch team? What are the things you need? We've talked about these before. Uh, cover art, to me, that is probably the biggest time consumer when you're down to the last 30 days of getting your book done. For a paperback book, you need to know how many pages are in there. Well, let's say I have eight and a half by 11. I want it, it put in a six by nine, which is a common uh, size for most help, help, self-help books and, and nonfiction. I can take that eight and a half by 11, let's say it's 55 pages, and I just fold it over. It's roughly 110 pages for a six by nine format, a little bit more if the book is a little bit smaller. But I need to know how many pages are in the book so that the spine can be added at the same time. So I have a back cover, I have a front cover, but the number of pages inside the book determine what the spine is. And until the book is written, and basically within 10 pages, you're going to be pretty good with, with that, uh, with having the cover done. Now, I will go out and get an ebook cover, just the, the front cover, and I'll get, I'll pay for four or five of them and let the designers you know, for five, six, seven, eight bucks a piece. They can do their magic and give me five different covers for about 40 bucks. And I can put them on, oh, I think I have a slide I talked about that. So I'll just cover that when I do. Okay, copyright, dedication. Uh, table of contents seems to bother a lot of people. They have to go back and change what page things were on. Uh, go to YouTube, look up style sheets on Microsoft Word. Super simple. It's a, and what it does is it generates automatically every single time you make a change. And let's say that chapter five started on page 61 and now all of a sudden it starts on page 63. It automatically does it for you. You don't even have to worry about what pages are there because it's all automatic. And I find style sheets to be the, one of the easiest things in the world to use. Author info. Uh, I've seen a couple of books come out and the author information is about two sentences. I just like, why? People want to know, how do I get in touch with this? What website? Is there anything else that I, I need? So author info, I think, is very, very important. Uh, how many pages? Let's say I had helped a couple authors. Uh, we started out 870-some pages. We got it down to about 458 or something. But sometimes you get too many pages in a book. Maybe that book you're writing should be two books, maybe three books, depending on how it's structured. But depending on how many pages you have. If I got 400 pages of eight and a half by 11, that's an 800 page, six and a half by nine size book. How readability is it? I write for baby boomers. That's my audience. I wanna make sure that font is big, they can see it. So I look at that. Uh, one of my clients uh, does children's books. We make sure we have a, a dyslexia font. So when kids are learning to read, if there is some level of dyslexia there, that we're not putting them in, in in harm's way, so to speak, that they can't make out what's there. And again, as always, whatever you're writing, what is the value that you're offering in the contents of that book? Fiverr.com is the one that I use. Generally speaking, I can get a, a $5 book cover ebook, and I buy full price just under eight bucks with all the fees. So, uh, but I need a PDF file for my paperback book, I need a JPEG file for my ebook. And I can I took one book cover and I had AI design five different book covers for me. I sent the five covers 
to the author. He picked two of them. I sent those two covers to Fiverr and I said, here's what my client likes. Here's what the book is about. Design a cover. And they came back with something he loved. The thing I was mentioning a minute ago, I buy five different book covers. I'll put them on Facebook and I'll say A or B, B or C, C or D. And what I'm getting is feedback from readers, not from me as an author. Authors have a very poor, they, they know what they like, but it's not necessarily what readers like. Uh, you're doing a competitor analysis. You look at a hundred different covers of the top selling books and literally every single category that's out there. What do the successful covers have? Color, images, font, whatever it may happen to be. Copy what they're doing. If you find one, I really like this cover, send that to the designer say, I like the colors on this. I like the font. Hello, you're on mute. Thank you. The what I've seen on some of them is that I can take my chapter titles and put them into AI and say, give me a book description, 300 words or less, or give me a book description, three short sentences, back cover of my book. And AI will generate something based on what I have. So there's a lot of same thing with my author information. I can have a very short two sentence author bio and I can have a two or three or four paragraph author bio that AI can take and modify and give me a finished product. And with any books, you can change content, you can change covers, you can change literally almost anything you want. Um, let's say that I'm writing a book on Alzheimer, which I did, and I can't remember, maybe it's September. Let's say September is Alzheimer's month and I have six months. I may want to sprinkle articles in social media, press releases saying that my book is coming out. And so it's coming out on the first day of Alzheimer's month. So I can use the national publicity for that kind of category that I'm writing in. Uh, it's uh, whatever it is, just Google national calendar of events, topics. And you'll get more information than you ever thought for national this day, national that day. Find something that aligns with your book and use that as your publication date. Uh, beta readers, people who will actually read your book for free. I generally have home parties. Uh, I have people come over for a dessert, a uh, glass of wine. We'll have 30 minutes of social intercourse. Then everybody will sit down for an hour, hour and a half. I give everybody a random chapters, a red pen, and I say, read and i'm not looking at people who enjoy that book i just need sets of eyes and then catch things uh, one thing that i caught was i use the word if a lot so guy wrote back says use the word when so i went there and i did a search i had 87 times i used the word if i went back and i think 81 of those 87 i changed it to when um you're never going to catch every single author you got at some point in time you have to declare victory and move on just do it and you can always come back later and make a change. Advanced copy, a lot of people want to have that thing in their hands so they can read it, know exactly what they're seeing. Uh, an author account, I would say go to YouTube, type in how do I do a KDP Amazon author account. They'll lead you through boom, ba boom, ba boom, every single thing that needs to be done. Uh, super simple. Social media, marketing, uh, email list, podcast, interviews, Lots of options are out there. Book signings, awards. Well, very few awards are free. If you're going to submit your book for an award, it's generally going to cost something. Now, there are some people that will submit your book for you into an award system. That's a good way of doing it because it doesn't cost you anything. 
but you don't know about it until after the fact you were selected. Uh, website. If you plan on writing other books, maybe the best thing is rebelofflin.com. You want to have your author name as the website, not the book title. Now, if it's just your memoir and that's the only book you're writing, uh, if it's a credibility book for whatever business you're in and you have no intention of writing another book, maybe you want to have that book title. Maybe it's a really good book title. Have that as your website. Again, check and find out what's out there because maybe redolofflin.com is taken, but I could do redolofflinauthor.com. I could do theredolofflin.com. I have a lot of options, or maybe it's .biz or .something else. There's so many dot .things out there nowadays. But one of the things that being an author gives you that very few other things do is speaking opportunities. You have now a book that is of interest. Let's say that uh, I'm a master gardener. I wrote my book here on South Texas floor, and, and I want to be able to now get out in front of various clubs and organizations. And I use that as my opportunity to say, hey, let me speak. I'll give away a, a couple of books as door prizes, and you can sell your books there. Lots of things you can do as a speaker when you have a book that's in your same field. Take a look at your competitors. I suggested looking at last week's show here on Talking Heads on the USA Global TV and Radio Network. And look at how do you know what your competitors are doing. If you know Joe Smith is the absolute number one seller in the category you're writing your book in, go do research on him. What does his website look like? Does he have email? Does he have a newsletter? Uh, what does his social media look like? There's a wealth of information out there that's just going to take you a few minutes of time to do that. So, <clears throat> Many authors begin marketing when their book is done. You should have two trains going down parallel tracks. You're starting your writing and you're starting your marketing. Why waste three months, six months, a year, year and a half of writing and nobody knows about it? Why not publish stuff on social media? Hey, I'm writing a book. Now you're accountable. You weren't accountable before because nobody else knew about it. But if I start marketing at the same time, it's going to help everything that's there. I saw something really nice the other day that I, I say more than a few times over the next several months. When you're writing and you know how your chapter is going to end and you know that you're getting ready to finish up pretty soon, stop. You already know how it's going to end. So the next time you get back together, you want to finish that or maybe you're going to add a little bit. But if you finish it, now all of a sudden you get to start with something new. <clears throat> but the mere fact that you already know how it's going to end, maybe it's a half a chapter, a couple paragraphs, but stop. Now in the, in the brain, how am I going to connect this to the next thing? Your brain will figure out all those interconnections. Now you sit back down, you start writing again, boom, you whip it out, and now you're able to, to transition. I think it just makes all sorts of sense in that particular regard. Okay, that kind of covers everything. The one thing I did want to tell you is that uh, – I think I have another one. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. One. So be it. Anyway, YouTube, I think, is probably one of the best tools out there. If you're writing and you want to publish, it's going to have answers for you. It's going to show you how to do things. AI is a tool. Use it accordingly. Uh, Google's good for research. Uh, AI is super good for research. I think YouTube's probably one of the best ones for research. But you got to be able, how am I asking the question? Uh, these are topics that I cover on Talking Heads on the USA Global TV Radio Network. Go to YouTube, go to Playlist, Talking Heads, Red Laughlin, and these, you know, gut health, cancer, uh, weight loss, health planning, longevity, lots of things in there that are available. And I can't get to that. There we go. Uh, again, the Essentially New Authors Guide has everything that we talked about here today. I can be reached at uh, red at redolofflin.com or red.olofflin at gmail.com at red like the color Olaflin O-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. And I have several other books that are available uh, that you can find 
on my website or on Amazon. So with that, I'm going to conclude today. And I don't know what we're going to be talking about next week, but I'm sure it's going to be a great topic. I just don't know what it is yet. You all take care and I'll catch you next week. Bye now. USA Global TV and Radio proudly presents our partner and sponsor, Mr. Philip Sykes and the British School of Excellence. Building confidence, changing lives. And now, proudly presenting the Polish Professional. On a transformative journey with the British School of Excellence's comprehensive suite of masterclasses, crafted to elevate your professional and personal life. Eight outstanding modules will elevate you to the next level. Module one, exploring life's purpose, delves into the depths of self-discovery, guiding you to chart your unique path to fulfillment and success. Module two, mastering professional presence and confidence. This masterclass is a deep dive into the art of self-assurance and commanding presence which is essential for standing out in today's competitive landscape. Module three, learn the secrets of visual impact, how to curate a personal style that amplifies your professional brand. Module four, mastering professional etiquette and communication excellence, navigating the nuances of corporate interaction with grace and tact. Module five, elegance in eloquence, we impart powerful techniques to captivate and persuade any audience with your oratory skills. Module six, unlock the potential of your emotional intelligence, EQ, and harness the ability to connect, empathize, and lead with emotional savvy. Module seven, mastering DISC, building a gateway to understanding behavioral styles, fostering better personal and professional relationships. Module eight, Mastery and Dining Etiquette. Building your confidence to perfect the subtleties of dining with finesse, enhancing your social savviness at any table. Step into the Polish Professional Program where poise, elegance and excellence aren't just taught, they're instilled for life. Join us to redefine your potential and polish your professional edge. To learn more, go to the British School of Excellence.com. The British School of Excellence are investors in people. Let us invest in you. This program has been brought to you in part by Zane Carson Carruth, etiquette and protocol expert, international award winning author, television show host, and philanthropist. Thank you to Zane, our official diamond sponsor for USA Global TV and Radio in partnership with E360 TV. Zane is the author of the world's first tooth fairy ever, as well as many other children's books. She's also the television host of Elegance, Polished Demeanor, and Posh Living, seen on USA Global TV and Radio. My name is Zane Carson Carruth, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory, and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable, and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children. And as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademark series, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book, Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand.
These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. To learn more about Zane, contact her through her website, zanecaruth.com, Z-A-N-E-C-A-R-R-U-T-H dot C-O-M. Order Zane's books and merchandise. Contact her about being a keynote speaker at your next event.